not all prisons are physical. There exists a prison that is not visible to the eye. It is subtle and consists of thoughts rather than bricks and stones. This prison is your own mind, which I also call the matrix. Most people are not aware that they are in prison. The moment you become aware of your imprisonment, you already have one foot outside the cell. If you begin this journey, it is best to finish it. Some people are satisfied with having one foot outside the cell. These are the people who know the way, but do not walk it. Don't be like them. Go all the way. The mind is constantly talking. It has a story about the world and yourself that keeps repeating on a daily basis like a broken record. Every day it keeps on repeating the thoughts from yesterday. And this pattern, if not interrupted, can continue until your last breath. The story of the mind differs from one individual to another and is based on one's past experiences. However, each and every story, regardless of whether it is positive or negative, is fictional and a poor substitute for reality. Every viewpoint is fictional and perpetuates your mental confinement. The most accurate viewpoint is to have no viewpoint. Having no viewpoint means simply letting go of the story that your mind tells you about yourself and the world you live in and looking at life without the lens of thoughts. Simply look at what is. Look without the mind and understand that life is what is happening, not what you think is happening. Life is now in this brief instant and you can experience it and live it, but you cannot explain it. All knowledge is a poor attempt to impose an explanation on the process of life. There is no such explanation. We do not know why we are here on this earth. We do not know the most fundamental questions about existence and our place in it. So how does the awakened human being deal with this situation? They don't, and that is why they are free. To do something about it means to employ the mind again and seek some artificial meaning and purpose, some explanation about how things are. The mind finds great comfort when it comes up with a story about the universe because it feels secure and in control. Those who are awake simply live life without trying to explain it, whereas those who are asleep don't live life. They only think about it. When you think about life, you miss life. To escape the matrix of the mind and to start living, enter the present moment, this moment right now, and stop waiting for a better moment to come. If you cannot find joy in this very moment, then you will not find it in the next moment either. The mind is a great trickster and can turn this having no viewpoint into a viewpoint. If that happens, you are again confined. It is important to understand that the way out is not via logical reasoning, but by dropping all reasoning. Simply drop your belief system in this very moment and have a clear look at what is happening. Did you die? No. What does that mean? It means that your belief system is not crucial to your survival. You can live without it. Living without beliefs and the need for constant control and security turns every moment into a miracle, a mystery, a benediction. If you think about it, nobody knows where they are going. People only pretend to know if they examine their knowing they will see that it is a mere assumption. Nobody knows what is going on, including me. However, I admit that I do not know what is happening, and I am fine with this fact. I simply go along with the river of life, enjoying each and every moment to the fullest. Can we live in this way? Why all the seriousness and neurosis? Why not have a playful attitude towards life? Think about it. The matrix serves as a powerful metaphor for how our minds shape our perception of reality. For most, The Matrix is one of the most powerful movies they've seen. It puts your whole life in a different perspective with a simple premise. What if your whole life is a lie? What if what you call reality is not actually real? We're going to go ahead and assume this is, in fact, the real world. Still, the notion of this movie can be applied to many different fields, including changing your mindset. In fact, just one scene from the movie teaches you the most important thing about dictating your mind the way you want to. You've probably seen it, but I want to remind you of the scene once again. Free your mind. So many people, even after watching the movie numerous times, never truly get the point. In a nutshell, it is all combined in that one scene, in that one line. What Morpheus says is the blueprint to changing your mindset, and this is not an exaggeration. As Henry Ford allegedly said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Now let's break the entire phrase down and see what it means. You have to let it all go. The building block of any change is the current state of mind. 
When trying to change, the only thing we have is our current mindset. To implement new ideas, you need to let go of the old ones. You have to let it all go. Previous notions, statements, and decisions. Abandoning your former way of thinking is scary for most people. They think something bad will happen to them, or they believe that it is not even possible, even after so many people have done it. That's why it's essential to let all fear, doubt, and disbelief out of your system. You're trying to build a strong mindset, and these notions are a sign of a weak mind, as they are holding you back from achieving your full potential. After you have let go of the old, poisonous parts of your mind, you can build new thoughts and a new way of thinking. However, to do it in a significant way, you need to have an open mind. You need to be open to abstract ideas and measures, which may seem drastic from your old point of view. The only way to move forward is to learn new things, free your mind, but that's not all. Let's take a look at the clip again. What does freeing your mind have to do with the ability to jump over a building? Allow me to take a little detour and talk about the brain in a vat. It is a concept used in philosophy in relation to knowledge, reality, truth, mind, and meaning. Imagine a mad scientist removed your brain and put it in a vat of life-sustaining liquid, and then connected it to a computer, simulating the outside world. The Matrix explained this in a very similar fashion. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. The brain is responsible for interpreting everything, and within this theoretical concept, it cannot know whether it's in a human skull or in a jar. The perceived reality is the same. If you are indeed a brain in a vat, it means that most things you learned in your lifetime are wrong. The only knowledge you have is of a false reality, while you don't know anything about the real world. Consequently, if you were a brain in a vat, would you really want to know it? Now apply the same method of thinking to forming a mindset. Your reality is formed within your brain, which can't know whether it's in a human body, a liquid-filled jar, or a metal exoskeleton. It doesn't matter. The most important thing to realize here is that you can create your own reality. If you believe something to be true, in your eyes, it is true. Most people walk around in the matrix, constrained by the system's rules, and feel pretty miserable all their lives. They don't believe something is possible, and hence, don't pursue it, and in the end, don't achieve it. You, on the other hand, have a different view. You truly believe you can accomplish something and work on finding ways to make it true. Ultimately, because of that, you achieve your goal. What Morpheus was trying to teach Neo is that the only way you can jump over a building is if you know you can. Don't think you can. Know you can. If you change the rules of what controls you, you will change the rules on what you can control. If you don't believe it, or kind of believe it, it won't work. Neo still couldn't completely grasp the concept that they were inside a computer program. He didn't really believe it was possible to jump that far, even after seeing Morpheus do it. Like most people, his mind probably started making excuses. He's just lucky. He's more experienced. He has a jetpack below his coat. Neo didn't truly believe that Morpheus jumped that far just by using the strength of his mind. That's why he only made it halfway and landed on his face. The matrix is in your mind and is therefore controlled by your mind. If you shape your mind in a way that you truly believe you can dodge bullets, break walls, and jump over buildings, you will be able to do it. Of course, our reality doesn't work the same, but the same method still applies. In conclusion, you can do anything you set your mind to. You just have to convince yourself that it's possible, and your brain will allow you to see the world around you from a positive can-do perspective. Most people have already defined their reality, a dark and gritty post-apocalyptic place with obstacles at every turn. You perceive the same surroundings in a different manner. It's a beautiful place with so many possibilities and potential, while every obstacle is a chance to learn and improve yourself. Use your mindset to control your life the way you want to. Never let other people control your mindset. That's how you can free your mind. Think about it. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video valuable, and if you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.